A pageant is a competition where you're purely judged on your looks, right? Absolutely not. So do you believe pageants then, they're not sexist and they don't objectify women's bodies? You know, that is actually a good question. So why wouldn't somebody start to make that change through like a blog or through an Instagram account or start a business around it? Why would you choose to go onto a platform in which you're judged by your looks? I know you're judged by other things, but it is a lot about the way you look because it's called Miss Universe Great Britain for a reason. This is why pageantry is so many steps forward mm-hmm. and more ahead than a lot of other sectors in the UK because the proof is there, the proof is in the pudding, right? Is a traditional beauty pageant out of date? Because all these restrictions on women are things that we're trying to move away from rather than encourage or support. It's not pageants that are out of date, it's people's views of pageantry that are out of date. How do pageants empower women? Like, how do you feel really empowered? Shoshana. Hello. Welcome to Millennial Mind. Thank you for having me. Pleasure, it's actually a funny story. So for everyone watching, I had a guest that cancelled last minute. And your sister, I put it on my Instagram saying, guest has cancelled last minute. I actually thought in that moment I was going to have to do a solo podcast episode. And I just thought, what on earth am I going to talk about? Even though I just think I speak so much, I was just like, what am I going to talk about? And I was panicking and I just thought, fine, let me just put it on Instagram and be transparent. And part of me was like, should I put it on? Are people going to think that I'm an idiot? And I was like, I'm just going to do it. And then your sister messaged and told me that not only are you a finalist for Miss Universe Great Britain, you're a dentist <laughs> and you're a presenter. My sister is like my agent. <laughs> <clears throat> she's probably thinking she needs to get a cut from everything I do. She should get a cut. Yeah. She's like your PI agent for yeah, sure. Yeah, she definitely is. She's so shout out to my sister. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, ha- it's, I'm really glad to have you here. And I think it's, I think it's quite crazy that you were free Less than 24 hours before. I'm, as you can tell, I'm very nasally right now. Are you really it's not unwell? COVID. I'm yes, very I'm unwell, well. so I sound very nasally. Don't worry, my throat's very well. unwell. No, you look amazing. <laughs> um, but thank you so much for coming here and at such short notice. So you're a dentist, you're a finalist for Miss Universe Great Britain, and you're a BBC presenter. How do you manage all these three things? And where do I actually begin? Honestly... They all work in unison, which is quite nice, Mm -hmm. Um, because being a dentist, obviously, it relates to the the documentary I've just finished filming with the BBC. Right. The documentary with the BBC, the kind of, like, message I'm trying to kind of send across works very well with Miss Universe Great Britain. Right. Um, And a part of, kind of, the documentary, we do speak about Miss Universe Great Britain. Um, So everything just goes hand in hand, which is quite nice. That is nice. Yeah, it does sound like a lot, but Mm -hmm. I think... Like, you would know, you're ambitious, <laughs> you're passionate. Like, you came straight from work, I came straight from work. Yeah. Like, we make it work, right? <laughs> I think that's when it's something that you love. It mm. almost lifts you. 100%. So I always say, and just, I, you know what, I like to share, because I feel like, if you're honest, someone will be listening and be like, I'm going through that. But with me, I feel like every week, I'm just drowning. But every week, when I record the podcast, I feel like this newfound energy. Yeah. And so that's the thing that keeps me going. Because when I'm here, I have so much fun. And then the high keeps me going for like two, three days. And then I'm like, oh, God, this is so hard. Why am I doing it? And then then I've got the next podcast to look forward to. So it's kind of like a yo-yo. Yeah. But almost doing new things keeps you excited. And I think if you didn't have them, it would be kind of boring. 100%. And I think it's always so important to kind of challenge ourselves, push ourselves. Mm -hmm. We all like being comfortable, right? For sure. where's the growth in comfort? Absolutely. So So tell me about dentistry. I've never understood why anyone would want to be a dentist. Looking in somebody's mouth, especially looking in my mouth, I obviously (laughs) tried to go into the dentist. Um, But why did you choose dentistry? So for me, I always knew, it sounds so generic, but I always knew I wanted to go into healthcare. Okay. So it was either medicine or dentistry, mainly for me. And I was, okay. you know, I was a bit of a science nerd at school, won't lie. Um, I'm so jealous. But, <laughs> don't be. Um, but after doing like work experience, that kind of thing, and seeing like lifestyle of a dentist and seeing what I really liked about dentistry is you see your results straight away. Right. You know, like say if you do a filling you've treated that straight away. If you're doing a new small makeover, you see that straight away. If you're taking a tooth out, you see the results of that straight away. And I really liked that about dentistry. And just kind of, whether it's giving somebody a brand new smile or taking them out of pain, it's just Mm. so rewarding. Um, And right now I'm a hospital dentist. So I see so many different things. I see kind of a lot of cancer patients who've mm-hmm. kind of been diagnosed with oral cancer. So we do a lot of assessments on them. I see some trauma cases, people born with kind of cleft palates with fewer teeth in their mouths. So wow. it's such a varied profession. Right. Um, I just love it. 
You have to look at my teeth. Oh, definitely. Awful. You have beautiful teeth. Oh, God. You're... Okay, I'm telling you, when you when you do <laughs> the x-rays, you'll see. I've had about like 100 fillings. Okay, I'm not going to exaggerate. I've had about 12 fillings. Um, same. Oh, great. I'm a dentist with a sweet teeth. Oh, perfect. Okay, well, then I will come but and see you. But then that makes me a relatable dentist. It's like, Absolutely. I understand. I tell my patients, I understand what you're going through. <laughs> I never thought of dentistry like that. You actually see the results straight away. That is quite rewarding. And I think 100%. it's quite nice. Yeah. If you can help someone instantaneously and almost take that pain away. So And it's quite artsy. It's very mm. like, you have to have good manual dexterity. It's very kind of, you're molding shapes of teeth, like when you're doing fillings. It's very artsy and it's very, very fun. Right. And, and my mum used to be a dental like nurse. So she kind of, like, growing up, she's always speaking about teeth. Okay, so, got it. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. That's why you became a dentist. So how did you apply to be on Miss Universe Great Britain? So, and why, actually? You know, that is actually a good question. <laughs> um, so funnily enough, like, throughout university, I used to do kind of Asian bridal modeling here and there, okay. you know, like lots of us do, right, just mm-hmm. generically. Um, but... I'm also a very keen philanthropist. I'm a very keen feminist. And I've been doing charity work kind of throughout university. So I was like the president of our Diwali show, which we had a show at the O2 Arena, mm-hmm. which raised like £10,000 for charity. Um, I've won awards such as Outstanding Contribution to Society. Right. Um, I was one of Rolls Royce's top 10 female undergraduates of the year. Okay. So I've always been kind of doing things to contribute to society because that's something I'm incredibly passionate about. Okay. So... In the search of kind of my next venture, I came across um, the well, an organization called A Sisterhood. Okay. And they happen to be the partner, the organization that's partnered with Miss Universe Great Britain. Right. Um, and can I just say, it's the most incredible organization I've ever seen. It's all about really? female empowerment and kind of celebrating the female cause. It, cele- it kind of empowers and supports charities such as stop acid attacks in india Mm -hmm. um kind of donating like bras for um people in africa Um, there's so many different charities under that umbrella kind of even ending female genital mutilation which i didn't know too much about but we're kind of well with the charity we're kind of um working towards ending that crime in the uk so so many incredible female causes are under this charity so i was like right i definitely want to get involved okay and obviously i saw the miss universe great britain logo at the bottom of the page and i was like spoke to my parents and they were like go for it like you have absolutely nothing to lose and i was like fine and i was like well generically i'm not five foot ten i'm not the you know the I, you know, the stereotype of a pageant girl. I have a science background. I wasn't brought up in pageantry like a lot of the other girls are. Okay. Um, but I went for the interviews and got through the rounds and here I am. So if you don't try, you don't get. <laughs> Absolutely. So Miss Universe is a pageant, mm-hmm. right? Now there's a lot of stereotypes and a lot of taboos about pageantry and that's what we're here to talk about today. And I think it's a topic that I never really explored, if I'm completely honest. It's something that as I was reading about this... I have mixed opinions on. Body dysmorphia and low self-esteem are issues that are rocketing in the UK and all around the world, if I'm completely honest. Now, a pageant is a competition where you're purely judged on your looks, right? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You could be, and again, when I say the most beautiful person, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, right? For sure. Beauty comes from within, 100%. As stereotypical and kind of as, you know cliche as it sounds it's just true you could be the most beautiful the most stunning person in the world Mm -hmm. but if you don't have the personality and the drive and the ambition and the goal to kind of make a difference you will not you will not make it to the first round or through the first round of a pageant so it's it's not just about the way you look it's absolutely not absolutely not and a perfect example is just this past weekend, I was invited to Wales to watch Miss Wales, which is um, the qualifier for Miss World. Right. And it was incredible to see how diverse the contestants were. Shapes and sizes, you know, it's, you don't have to be mentioned body dysmorphia. Mm. Every single shape and size, every single ethnicity, every single height. In my cohort for Miss Universe Great Britain, mm-hmm. exactly the same. Do you believe pageants then, they're not sexist and they don't objectify women's bodies? Absolutely not. Why? Because the reason, and this is again, I think people have these opinions, it's just because they're not educated about pageantry. Okay, okay? So, so let's educate people. What, let's educate them. What is pageantry and why is it not about any of those things? So pageantry 
provides an incredible, incredible platform to celebrate and empower women. Okay. Okay. It is not about the way you look. It's about the difference you want to make to the world. Mm. Every single contestant from Miss Universe Great Britain has a platform, has an advocacy. They want, there's something, there's something they really want to change or something they're super, super passionate about. And that could be kind of to do with sexism, racism, discrimination in any form. It could be to do with politics. The current Miss Universe, her advocacy and her platform is period health. Right. And menstrual health, which is something that's so, so important. Mm. Now tell me, what other platform can provide that opportunity for somebody to kind of speak about the female cause and speak about and make make a change? Miss Universe and pageantry provides that platform. But I guess why wouldn't somebody start to make that change through like a blog or through an Instagram account or start a business around it? Why would you choose to go onto a platform in which you're judged by your looks? I know you're judged by other things, but it is a lot about the way you look because it's called Miss Universe Great Britain for a reason. Why would you go onto a platform like that to do those things? So... You're right. You can have a blog, you can Mm -hmm. have a business, you can have any of these things to promote it. Miss Universe is an incredible platform, like I said. Yeah. I know you're probably asking in a way that it's another beauty queen who's just, you know, it's superficial. Why would you use, why would you go on something that's so superficial, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not superficial. There's so much depth. If you look at the work that the previous Miss Universes have done. Yeah. The platform that Miss Universe provides you with, I honestly believe it's a platform that a blog a business all these other things that you've mentioned cannot provide mm-hmm. um obviously blogging is fantastic podcasts are fantastic like I'm sure you're inspiring so many people by just doing this mm-hmm. there's absolutely nothing wrong with using a pageant for that same reason why not it's just an alternative is what I'm hearing yeah so I'm asking why wouldn't why wouldn't you start a blog but why wouldn't I start a blog instead of doing a podcast exactly Do you know what I mean yeah. it's it's just an alternative and I think I really want to touch on the fact that you said previous Miss Universes have really made an impact. Name me an example. Miss Universe right now. Okay. Okay. Hanaz. And she is absolutely amazing. Okay. Really? So like I said, she's she was just in the Philippines last week speaking about kind of period health and period poverty, which is such an important cause. Mm. Okay. Like... It's not a luxury to provide be provided with sanitary pads or mm-hmm. tampons. It's not a luxury. That's a necessity. Absolutely. And tell me, have you ever seen another platform where period health is spoken about so openly? I haven't actually. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And it's, an, it's, it's so important. Mm. It's super important. Okay. And one thing that I personally think is incredible about Miss Universe Great Britain is the representation. As a British Asian woman, to be able to have the chance to represent Great Britain Mm -hmm. on such a prestigious and global platform, that should just be looked at as, wow, we have come so far. Absolutely. It's no no secret that Asians, especially South Asians, are underrepresented in basically every sector in the UK. Whether it's reality TV, whether it's politics, whether it's in the modelling industry, sports. How many Indians are on the England football team? That's so true. We are underrepresented. So the fact that there's a platform such as pageantry, which provides a platform where we had, we've had a couple of um, black Miss Universe Great Britons. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's a few Asians like myself. Mm -hmm. So it just provides kind of that unity and that one step closer to ending discrimination, which, and I think this is why pageantry is so many steps forward mm-hmm. and more ahead than a lot of other sectors in the UK because the proof is there, the proof is in the pudding, right? I have to push back a little bit. I read an article that contestants were suing Miss France for alleged discrimination on the way that they looked and there were some requirements that they had stipulated. They had to be taller than five foot five. They couldn't be married or have children. They couldn't have a tattoo and they weren't allowed to put on any weight at all they had to stay the same is a traditional beauty pageant out of date because all these restrictions on women are things that we're trying to move away from rather than encourage or support firstly i think 
It's not pageants that are out of date. It's people's views of pageantry that are out of date. Right. Okay. And what you're saying about, you know, they're not allowed to gain weight. They're not allowed to kind of, you know, that's obviously a not very nice thing to read or even hear about. Mm -hmm. And I want to represent kind of, you don't need to be that typical stereotype of a pageant girl. Right. And I can't speak about Miss France. I wasn't mm-hmm. there. I'm not competing. Yeah. But one thing I will say is with Miss Universe Great Britain, we don't have any aesthetic type of restrictions. Right. You don't have to be a particular size. Absolutely not. And we had our one of our pageant training days a few days ago. And we had girls ranging from like four foot ten to six foot. We had girls ranging from every different body size, every different style of hair. Loads of them have tattoos. Right. So, again, I can't speak for Miss France because that's a completely different organisation to Miss Universe Great Britain. Mm -hmm. But our main message at Miss Universe Great Britain is to empower and accept. And a huge part of what I'm trying to stand for is inclusivity. Right. Which means no matter what you look like, no matter where you come from, no matter your background, whether it's your socioeconomic background, your gender, your race, your religion, doesn't matter who you are, you're all treated as equals and one and deserve the same level of respect so I completely appreciate what you're saying about Mm. Miss France Mm. and I can see why that would kind of raise eyebrows like yours absolutely Um, but all I can say is Miss Universe Great Britain is one of the most inclusive platforms um so I'm very proud to be to be associated with them and I think that's what we need to understand is like it's probably different in different countries Mm -hmm. you know the laws are different in different countries look what's happening in Afghanistan right now to women it's very different from the UK so Everything is everything is different, and I think that we've we've coupled pageants into one category and said that they're all like this and they're all in this way. And to be honest, I had that view until I re- researched. You know, I didn't really understand because I'm thinking, how do pageants empower women? Like, how do you feel really empowered? Just, it's so incredible because, like I said, we all have an advocacy. We all have something. We're so every single contestant. Mm-hmm has something they're so passionate about and that contributes to the greater good. Mm -hmm. And that creates a sisterhood. Yeah. And it's just beautiful. I can't explain it. It's so nice, the kind of unity that all of these girls have. And we're all from different walks of lives. I'm a dentist. Mm -hmm. There are accountants. There are doctors. There are people who work in the entertainment industry. People who I wouldn't generally come across in my day-to-day life. Um, And it's so nice because we find that common ground. Yeah. And the beautiful thing about Miss Universe is... It's changed so much over the years. Mm. People probably look at pageants, like you said, and say, you can, like, how is that empowering? You're walking in a bikini. Is that objectifying women? And that's something I know we touched on. Mm. Absolutely not. Because if the girls feel so confident and say, right, this is what I look like. I'm going to strut my stuff. I feel confident. I feel beautiful. Why is that ever a bad thing? Of course that's empowering. And, you know, as a society, we're encouraging women to feel confident. Exactly. Every woman exactly. will say that women should be confident. Women should feel strong. Women should do whatever they want. And yet we don't actually, we don't, we judge people who do, who do the, exactly that. Yeah. So if women themselves are saying, I feel empowered in a bikini, you know, I had the conversation with Shannon last week and she was like, if I want to pose with top, if I want to create topless photos, that's my choice. 100%. It's my body. And I really do believe that now. I'm thinking like I had such a traditional mindset of like, oh my God, girls shouldn't do this and boys shouldn't do that because it's ingrained from us from such a young age. I'm interested to know that you're from an Indian background and your parents, what were they like with this whole process? So in Miss Universe Great Britain, do you have to walk in a bikini? You don't have to walk in a bikini. Okay. But there is a bikini round. Right. Okay. And how do they feel about that? Nothing but supportive, nothing but encouraging. Wow. My dad was asking me last week, he was like, Trishala, we need to kind of let the family know that if you want to ask them, you know, to come and buy tickets. And wow. my like my parents want everyone to come. They're so proud. That's so nice. They're always just like, they're super, super encouraging. And this is why I feel like I'm incredibly lucky, especially being from a South Asian background, to have sure. that support. And my parents have always had the mentality do what you want in life. Do what makes you happy. As long as you're not harming anyone. Absolutely. Just do what makes you happy. And they completely understand the what Miss Universe and Miss U- what, what Miss Universe Great Britain represents. Mm-hmm. And like I said, why is that ever a bad thing? Absolutely. It provides me with a voice 
and a platform to speak about what I'm passionate about. It gives me the chance to be a role model that I never had in the public eye growing up. Yeah. Did you ever see a British Asian woman in the public eye who would challenge kind of racism, sexism? Absolutely not. Political kind never. of decisions that have been made. I have that opportunity. Mm. So why is that ever a bad thing? There could be another young Asian girl or anyone who's been kind of, not a victim of, but a victim yeah. of discrimination, yeah. kind of inequalities, things that I've experienced. Mm -hmm. And if I can be that voice for one of those girls, then that's one, that's job done. That's amazing. I think that's so powerful. And, mm. you know, I think what you're saying is it's just a platform that's given you a voice. And that's something that you've done with your BBC documentary, right, as well. That's another thing that you're really passionate about. Tell me a little bit 100%. more about that. So, completely. And I've been invited several times on the BBC Asia Network Big Debate Show. Mm -hmm. Now, if that's because of Miss Universe Great Britain, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But do I think it may have contributed? Of course. I've been invited to speak about kind of the awful situation with Sarah Everard, with her sexual assault mm -hmm. um, and murder. I was asked to comment on that. I've been asked to comment on NHS dentistry. Mm -hmm. I've been asked to comment on my views on dating, on racism at Wimbledon. Right. And I just think that if Miss Universe Great Britain had a play to part in me having those opportunities, then amazing, because That's I've amazing. been able to get my views out there. And if I can change or help open up difficult conversations, especially in the South Asian community, mm -hmm. then again, that's job done. If we can openly speak about sexism and gender roles and kind of expectations in society and right. in a household, if I can be the person to trigger those conversations, yeah, then that's amazing. That's me. I'm like constantly talking about gender roles and constantly talking 100%. about changing our perspective. But you know, I don't really believe in cancel culture. I believe, you know, that we should try and understand different perspectives, understand different ways of thinking. We've all been raised in different ways and we've all had different upbringings. Like you said, your parents are really supportive. They don't mind 100%. the fact that you're going to be walking. I don't, shouldn't even say they don't mind. They're supportive of the fact that you're going to be walking in a bikini. They want people to come and watch you. I'm not sure my parents would have that same view. And I think that's why it's great to have this conversation to learn about different things. So I don't believe we should just cancel pageants and just say, oh, no, they're a bad thing. If they're empowering women, if you're partnering with all these amazing charities, if you're able to have a voice on issues that you're really passionate about and that you feel that you want to make a change in the world, why is it such a bad thing? Why do you think there's such a taboo around pageantry? Like I said, I just don't think that people's opinions of pageantry have changed with the times. Okay. And even if you just look at last year, mm -hmm. I believe it was Miss Universe Bahrain. She didn't wear a bikini on the bikini round. She wore this beautiful kind of... She was covered up okay. completely, okay? She looked stunning. Mm. She looked absolutely stunning. We had kind of contestants who were five foot two, five foot three last year, mm -hmm. okay? We had, you know, contestants from every single nationality. And look, I'm an example. I'm Miss, Uni I'm a Miss Universe Great Britain finalist. I'm British Indian. Mm. Our, our ancestors, our grandparents, when they came to this country... 100% faced racism and discrimination. Yeah. So imagine how much times have evolved that an Asian can potentially represent Great Britain at Miss Universe. So Amazing. what I'm trying to say is that pageantry has changed so much with the times, but mm -hmm. people's opinions are still stuck. Okay? I guess you have the first-hand experience of mm -hmm. experiencing it and saying that it's a positive experience rather than 100%. a negative experience. In what other ways do you think it's been a really positive experience for you? I think the opportunities it provides and a lot of self-development, a lot of self-growth. Really? And think about it. In every pageant of Miss Universe and Miss Universe Great Britain I can speak for, mm -hmm. there's always kind of a Q&A round, a question and answer. And the girls are so knowledgeable. They can ask you questions about racism, sexism. There was a question last, last year about the COVID passports, about kind of Black Lives Matter movement. Mm -hmm. The girls are so kind of worldly. Right. And it teaches you so much, so, so much. And again, I would not meet these kinds of people and have that sisterhood mm -hmm. and maybe have such knowledge. We all learn so much from each other. And I wouldn't have that if pageantry didn't exist. Mm -hmm. So I think it's definitely helped me grow as a person, um, regardless of if I win, if I don't win. Just being a Miss Universe Great Britain finalist for me has improved my life greatly. And 
it just goes to show that, like I said, the opportunities. Like I've been yeah. invited to speak on the BBC Asian Network about the, on their big debate show. And again, I don't know if that's because of Miss Universe Great Britain or if that's just because of the charity work I've done. I've kind of obviously just finished filming my first BBC documentary, which yeah. has been a dream of mine since I was so, so young. Um, again, I don't know if Miss Universe Great Britain had a part to play in that. I do want to share that story because you mm. told me that yesterday. I think it's remarkable what you did. So tell me about how you essentially got that documentary. So I got into contact with a colleague at the BBC. Mm -hmm. um, I said, look, I have this idea. I think it's really, really important. I went to her with the facts. Right. And um, I pestered her a bit. Yeah. <laughs> pestered her. Um, and a few months later, she was like, let's make this documentary. It's no amazing. Way. Yeah. That's so, incredible. Yeah, I just think, again, to show people, like, this, it goes back to what I'm saying about diversity, okay? Like, in our culture, growing up, if if you told your Asian family, right, mum, when I grow up, I want to make a podcast. Right. What would they have said? Be like, what's a podcast? What's a podcast? <laughs> but generically, people just expect you, especially in a lot of cultures, to be mm -hmm. a certain way and have certain roles. Oh, so 100%. it's so nice that... Yes, I'm a dentist, but to have kind of accomplished something that I think maybe growing up, I thought I would never be able to do that um, yeah. because I didn't go to kind of like, you know, I didn't do journalism at university. Mm -hmm. I didn't, you know, do one of those degrees where it involves presenting or I didn't Absolutely. do English. All the kind of presenters are, well, most of them, a lot of them at the BBC are Oxbridge. Yeah. Um, I just went to, to King's to study dentistry. So it's so nice that I found my own way through kind of determination mm -hmm. to make my, my own dream come true. And it's so nice to say that, that in my mid-20s, I was able to do something like that. That's amazing. I feel like, you know, you're so right. When you're younger, you probably think, I could never do that. And then no. to accomplish that when you're older, it is amazing. I, I wanted to be a journalist. I wanted really? to change my degree. I, I, I didn't, I wanted to do law. Mm. And then through clearing, I got journalism. I didn't take it. I had to do law and I hated it, really? but I always regretted not doing journalism because I always wanted to be a news presenter when I was younger. Oh, really? Yeah, and then I kind of got into my teens and I was really argumentative, so everyone was like, you'll be a great barrister, and I was like, yeah, I'm going to be a barrister. I absolutely hated law, was rubbish really? at it, did not practice. Lots of reading, apparently. Lots of reading, yeah. really boring, uh, not for me. But it's interesting, your point around, we judge people so much for doing things, but some people have just dreamed of doing those things when they're younger. Shannon really? said this, she said she dreamed of being a page three girl. Like that was her dream. And then yeah. she got to live it and she felt so proud. Yeah. So who is anyone else to criticize you for that? Absolutely not. And we need to also remember, it's not about just the end goal. It's about mm, the journey to get there. For sure. Especially with pageantry. Priyanka Chopra, mm -hmm. she's done incredibly. We can all say that. And for sure. as a South Asian woman, it's mm -hmm. incredible to see that she is such a good representation. And she speaks about such important, important causes. She just right. does. And... Again, in an industry where we're severely underrepresented, it's great she has such an impact. Right. Now, she comes from a pageantry background. I didn't know that. Yeah, she won Miss World. So I think I did know that, actually. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah she did. Yeah. Oh, I n but I never associated her with that, which is what's interesting. Yeah, exactly. So what I'm saying is, if people kind of have these views, skewed views of pageantry, but then look at somebody like her and think, wow, mm. but never forget somebody's journey because that's what makes them there. And that's what makes kind of their accomplishments. She's there because of everything All she's these small through. steps. Exactly. I think people don't remember that. I think you just yeah. think of like this one big thing that gets you there. It's like so many small steps exactly. that you have to take that people perhaps don't remember or they don't see or they, they, they don't know about. Exactly. There's so many things that people obviously do in their life to get somewhere that people just are completely unaware of and you can't share all those things no. as well. You know, you may have been rejected like 15 times and you may not want to share that. But then you get something. It's important to. It's completely important to. And it's okay to say, I wanted this. Yeah. But unfortunately, it didn't happen for me. That's also so okay to say. There's no embarrassment in it. Absolutely. Like, it's so nice you openly say, I hated my degree. Yeah, You're I not did. forcing it. You're not forcing it. Like, you're <laughs> honest. Yeah. And it's so nice you're openly saying, I don't know how my parents would feel if you mm -hmm. walk, if you walked in a bikini. Mm -hmm. Like mine are absolutely fine. But it's so nice. It's important to have honest and open conversations because the only way we learn from each other and the only way we develop. Absolutely. I think so. I think, you know, there's so many topics that we could talk about that, 
you know, you could ask about very general things. And this is something that I really didn't know much about. Mm. And it's something that I really wanted to explore and share. So thank you so much for coming on. Not at all. It's a pleasure to be here. Oh, thank you so much. It's a, we have a closing tradition. Okay. Truth or dare? Oh, God. Go. I'm ready. Um, truth. Fine. Tell me something the BBC have asked you not to share. Okay, there may or may not be another big project on the horizon. Very exciting. Watch this space. You can't tell me anymore. I can't tell you anymore. (laughs) That's enough. That's perfect. (laughs) Honestly, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it, and for coming on so last minute, and for being so open. You're lucky I'm on well today. That's why I was free. So, (laughs) well, thank you so much. No, thank you. Hey everyone, and thank you so much for listening to this podcast. Wherever you're listening or watching, if you could press the like, follow and subscribe button, it would mean the world to me.